In this lesson, we're going to develop our indefinite integrals techniques a little bit. So previously, we have only seen the indefinite integrals of power rule functions. Um, so polynomials that we could do reverse power rule on. Here, we're going to extend that a little bit to different types of functions. Now, my first example is a little bit ambiguous. But you can clearly see my second example has a sign in it, and that's not going to be solved by using the opposite inverse power rule. Okay, So let's jump right into this first one here. Now this seems to be at first glance one that I could rewrite using the strategy we had in the last lesson. Right? So I turn my x into an x to the negative 1 to get rid of this fractional situation. But when I try to use the power rule for integrals, so I add 1 to my exponent, I get x to the 0. This feels weird, right? Because x to the 0 is 1, so this would just be like negative 5. And we know that the derivative of a constant is 0, um, so we know that the derivative of this particular result is not equal to negative 5 over x, right? So we're always going to check on these to make sure that our deriv the derivative of our result is equal to our integral. And in this case, this check step tells me that this is wrong. Now, when I'm in a bind here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my reference sheet with all my derivatives rules. So this is on the course website. And what I want to do is I want to look for a function that resembles the integral I'm trying to take. So again, I'm looking for negative 5 over x. And I don't quite see it, but I do have a 1 over x. So I know that the derivative of the natural log of x is equal to 1 over x. So what I can do is I can say that my integral now, I can factor out that 5. And then I have the derivative of natural log, right? So this becomes negative 5 times the natural log of x. When I integrate, plus a constant. So here's the key. When you're unsure how to integrate, find a similar function on the differentiation formulas reference. So just like this reference sheet was our Bible when we were learning derivatives, this is going to be useful for us when we're learning integrals as well. Let's look at some more examples here. So we'll look at our second example now. Now I can break this up and I don't necessarily need you to show this stuff in your work, but I will show it just to make it clear. So we know from our work that when I'm adding two integrals, I can separate them into two separate integrals here. Okay. Now, integral of t squared, I already know how to do, is going to be t to the third over 3 plus c. And then sine, well, we want to find a derivative or a function whose derivative is some form of sine. I got my t there. So I'm going to look at my list, and look, the derivative of cosine is negative sine x. That means the integral of negative sine x is cosine of x. So plus cosine uh, t plus c. Okay. Now, there's a convention here. So I have two different c's in my result here. So you might add these together and say like 2c, but we don't necessarily know they're even the same constant. But any c plus another c, any constant plus another constant, is just another constant, right? So the convention here is that we can combine these and just write 1c. So t to the third over 3 plus cosine t just plus c, right? And this c represents now both of these constants. 
Okay, so hopefully you're getting the idea here. We'll do a couple trickier examples. So here I have 1 minus cosecant t, cotangent t. And this one seems a little bit more obscure, like what in the world is cosecant cotangent? But when you look, that's actually the derivative of cosecant, is cosecant cotangent of x. Okay, So it never hurts to check. In the future, we're going to be learning some more challenging integration techniques um, where it won't necessarily be the reverse of the rule here. But here, um, this one happens to show up. So the integral of 1 with respect to t is just t. And then remember, my derivative was negative, right? So in other words, when I look at my list, oops, my negative sign is part of that derivatives formula. So the antiderivative is just plain old cosecant. So plus cosecant of t plus c. And notice I didn't write both my c's this time for my two different integrals. I just combined them right away, which is fine. Okay, we'll do, I think, two more. Here they get a little bit trickier, just a little bit, though. So notice... Um, you know the rule here, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. We have this 5 here, okay? So I'm going to follow this pattern that the derivative keeps this function the same. We'll say e to the 5x, but then I can check. So e to the 5x gives 5 e to the 5x. Okay, so that's not my original function. This, by the way, should have a dx in it. Um, so this isn't quite right, right? But we can follow the same logic as we followed when we were doing power rule, right? If I put a 1 fifth in front of it, let's see what happens now. So this was wrong, but 1 fifth e to the 5x. Well, 5 times 1 fifth cancels out, and that gives me e to the 5x. Okay? Plus c. So in situations where you might use chain rule, your antiderivative needs to account for that. Okay? And the way you can solve this, and when you do the practice problems, you should check every single one, just double check. Does my derivative give me what I was originally integrating? If so, you're right. If not, you're wrong. Okay, so you can check yourself on every single one of these before you even submit on Delta Math. And we'll do just one more here. This is an interesting one, right? Because this looks pretty crazy. And as I look at my derivative sheet, I don't see anything that really looks like this. Other than you might be thinking quotient rule, but all those rules, quotient rule, product rule, they apply when the derivative we're taking is a product or when the integral we're taking is a product, but they don't necessarily work in reverse. Here we're going to get a little bit tricky. So I'm going to separate my division problem into separate integrals, and then I'm going to simplify. So x squared over x is x, and then the root of x over x is x to the negative one half. And then I can do my power rule, reverse power rule. So x squared over 2 minus x to the 1 half. Oops. And then multiply by the reciprocal of that, 2, right? Plus c. So rewriting this quotient as two separate integrals is a way we tackle that. So as you do these, I highly encourage you to check. And your checking is going to be just take the derivative. And in this case, it works. So power rule, I get x minus, let's see, 1 half times negative 2 is negative 1 to the negative 1 half. Okay, so you can check your work before you submit. There's no reason you shouldn't get these 100% right.